What's going on everybody, my name is Lucas and we're back for episode 5 of playing through every game in my over 1000 game Steam library. As usual, I'm rating each game on how much I think they're actually worth playing or coming back to. First up, let's talk about Antichamber. This has got to be one of the best puzzle games I've ever played. This is a game that loves to challenge your perception of every situation you find yourself in. Things are rarely as they seem at first glance, and the game highly encourages out-of-the-box thinking. There are many looping paths in Antichamber, and you'll find that sometimes you end up in places you've already been. When this happens, it's likely that a puzzle that you had completed on your journey may have shown you a different way of looking at other seemingly more simplistic puzzles you've already solved. But with your newfound knowledge, you're now able to solve the puzzle in a new way, opening a new path. The game is all about illusions, and it hints at solutions with little self-help style phrases and comic panels on the wall. Those panels show up on a large screen in the starting room, so you can see approximately how many puzzles you've completed along with a map that can be used to fast travel back to any puzzles that you've already been through. Because the game, in all actuality, is a three or more dimensional maze of puzzles. This is not an easy puzzle game. It actually makes you think, and I love that. Nine out of ten. Up next, we've got Aperture Desk Job. This is a short game, around half an hour long, that was made as a tech demo for the Steam Deck. In that capacity, it's great. It shows off the various controls of the Steam Deck and gives you a few laughs in the process. It's also a nice little addition to the Portal universe. Still, part of me really does wish it were longer. I will, however, give it an 8 out of 10. Anodyne is next, and it wasn't quite what I was expecting. It reminds me of an older Legend of Zelda style game, except with modern, semi-satirical writing. The game seems to think it's pretty funny in certain points, but I don't really share that sentiment. A lot of the humor comes off as dry or as someone trying to be ridiculous, but either not going far enough or going a bit too far just not quite hitting the mark. It has a kind of empty yet expansive world that was lacking a bit of the charm I was anticipating. I just felt bored playing it. It did have great music though, very chill. I tried to play a second session of this one, but I just couldn't bring myself to spend the time on it. I just can't get into this game. Four out of 10, it loses my attention way too fast. Next up is a normal lost phone. It's an interesting concept, finding a lost phone and going through all of its contents to figure out stuff about its owner, but unfortunately, that's just about as tedious as you'd expect it to be. There's a lot of reading through messages that aren't very interesting, because they're just that, someone's messages. It's not something I would bother to do in real life, especially since I already barely read my own messages. It's painfully exhausting for me to try to read so many of someone else's. I am, after all, very self-absorbed. Not to mention that it's kind of creepy behavior if you think about it, especially since at the end of the game you learn that the person who owned the phone didn't want anyone going through their stuff and finding their secrets. No, couldn't be creepy at all if I just go through all of a random person's files. It just makes us, like, friends, right? You know, while we're at it, we might as well hack into all of their dating apps. That should really tell us a lot about who our new friend is. What's this? They have an unsent email draft? Well, I've gotta help my new buddy out and send their email for them. I'm sure they'll thank me later. You find out more and more about this phone's owner through little clues here and there until you get to a point where you're explicitly told the person's LGBT secret. And sure, that gives us a little insight into their situation, but honestly... Who are you? Wasn't not its business. The game does have some good messages and information that could help people understand more about people who are different from them, or perhaps it could help someone in that situation feel more understood. So I will give the game that. It did feel creepy though. 5 out of 10. There was way too much in terms of pointless messages that didn't matter at all, and while that does make it more realistic, it also made me very tired going through all that pointlessness. And following that, we've got the sequel, Another Lost Phone. 
This one, while being similar in concept to a normal Lost Phone, handled the whole thing a bit better. This one cuts out a lot of superfluous messages, and most of what you get seems a lot more relevant, which makes the game feel like it has much more respect for your time. This one felt much less creepy, because the owner of the phone actually intended for her phone to be found and gone through, and some good can actually come from this. There was still some tedium in going through other people's messages, but at least they were all adults around my age this time, which made it more relatable. It paints the player a decent image of what an abusive relationship might look like, and actually might be helpful to someone in that situation in terms of making them realize some negative behavior patterns. This was much better than the first game in my opinion. I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. Still not my cup of tea, but better. I would like to see one of these style of games where you play as a detective looking through a murder victim's phone in order to catch the killer and save another victim or something like that. That'd be neat. Anyway, next we've got Assassin's Creed Rogue, which is oddly the only one in the series I own on Steam. Though I do own most of the rest of the series on PlayStation and Xbox, aside from the newest games, Origins and Onward. This, however, is a fantastic Assassin's Creed game. It's really fun and has a great setting. The Northern Atlantic is a region that doesn't see much representation in games, and I absolutely love it. Very quickly you get access to your ship, the Morrigan, and getting to captain her through a blizzard while engaging enemy ships is just awesome. The ship combat feels great, and there's a great variety of weapons and upgrades for both you and the Morrigan. It's been a while since I've played an Assassin's Creed game. Years, actually, and I've never played any with ship combat until now. I'm having a blast with this one. 8.5 out of 10. I'm going to come back to this one soon, but first, I think I'll play through Black Flag on the PlayStation since it does take place around 40 years prior to Rogue. Alright, cowboy, next we've got Ashes to Ashes. This one drew me in with its great aesthetic, but let me down right quick with its terrible voice acting and sound leveling. Is that a damn skeleton? Who the devil would come around these parts? Wait, would both of you shut up? You see that? Get him! Am I hallucinating or is that a walking pole? Whatever it is, kill it! I also encountered consistent crashes at certain points, which made me have to avoid certain areas entirely. They had a neat idea of using bullets with different elemental effects, however, you have unlimited ammo with no reload. So you can just set up all the elemental bullets in the revolver and just start blasting. I started blasting. Bam, bam. It really felt like an unfinished student project, and what do you know? Turns out it is. It was free and short. So in light of that, I'd say not bad. And since it was a student project, I think this game could definitely be iterated upon to make an actually good game somewhere down the road. In its current state though, I don't really want to play it again. It is very rough around the edges. The particle effects were completely overwhelming to the point I couldn't tell what was going on most of the time. Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. Another, somewhat more hilarious environmental detail was that anytime something exploded, like a boulder, the leftover pieces would block your path until they eventually melted out of existence like ice cubes. It was a very odd, but amusing way of handling debris. Other than that, the art direction was pretty good. The music was also pretty good, standard western fare. I think this is a solid proof of concept, but needs serious development time and refinement with all new voice actors, but the concept has potential. 3 out of 10, keep going. We've got another student game next, and that is On You. This game was very pleasant to look at, but was also unfortunately plagued with glitches. Though no full-on crashes this time. Every time the game loaded a new scene, most of the settings would revert to default, which meant I had to re-enable V-Sync every few minutes and take the game out of and back into full screen mode for that change to take effect, in order to prevent some pretty terrible screen tearing. The story was neat but underdeveloped, with the ending feeling like it came out of nowhere. For a student game, I think it was pretty well done. It was a pleasant experience that just needed some finishing touches. The game took around an hour and 15 minutes to finish, though I did waste a bit of time due to the glitches. I'd like to see a more polished full release of this game with some more story content. 5.5 out of 10. Now let's take a look at Arise, a simple story. 
This is a wonderful piece of art. It tells a heartwarming and very human story that makes me feel so full of emotion. It is joyous and sorrowful and just spectacular. The story is told without words, but rather a series of images collected throughout the game, along with all the other visual storytelling that make the game so universally understandable. It is a beautiful game, both in terms of its story as well as its artwork. The game design is also top-notch. The primary mechanic of this game is time manipulation. You can reverse, fast-forward, and pause time, allowing you to alter your environment to forge a path forward. You've also got a pretty neat little grappling hook. This is a super unique 3D platformer puzzle game with puzzles that are both interesting and satisfying. The art style is lovely and the sound design is very well done. The musical score is phenomenally emotive and fits every scene perfectly. This game is 100% worth experiencing. 10 out of 10. I was in tears by the game's end and anything that can give me a reaction like that is something I can highly recommend. This was a very interesting mix of games. I was pleasantly surprised by some, and somewhat disappointed by others. I'd be interested to hear about your experiences with these games in the comments below. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, you can click on this playlist to get caught up. Links will also be in the description. As always, remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. See you in the next one!